السلام عليكم طلاب نرحب بكم محاضرة جديدة مادة صناعة الأسنان المرحلة الثانية Subject today is the waxing and carving of the trial linger Waxing and carving of trial linger We should link with the previous lecture So to understand what do we mean by the waxing and carving. After we finish the arrangement of the posterior teeth, now we have what's named a trial denture. We must check uh, the denture inside patient mouth, so it's named a trial denture. We just want to try this uh, record pace and the arrangement of the uh, anterior and posterior teeth inside patient mouth. Check the occlusion. Uh, check the aesthetic uh, and uh, check also the adaptation to uh, underlying tissue. All these and also check the ret retention, uh, vertical dimension, uh, centric relation, uh, and also in some situation as, as we will take in the end of this lecture uh, for recording for uh, of the posterior bilateral cell area. So this. Uh, because uh, we, uh, as a second class, you take and study and practice uh, only the uh, laboratory stage, but you should know what happened at the clinic. Yeah? When you finish for uh, the arrangement of the posterior teeth, the next step at the clinic, name it a trial danger. We need to trial this danger. After we make this uh, trial of the danger, we uh, finish this complete denture uh, before the processing. Uh, how we are finish this complete denture? We uh, make the ball surface uh, resemble the missing oral tissue because we because we not just uh, we not just uh, make a replacement for the missing teeth. We just we also make a replacement for missing very old tissue. We uh, make a replacement for the missing uh, gingival tissue and other oral tissue inside patient mouth. So and also the we must know the goals for this waxing and carving is not it, the aesthetic is not reprodu reproduced just by arrangement of the teeth the aesthetic is reproduced by uh, carving and waxing the gingival portion because the patient when smile uh, not only the teeth is appear during a smile also the uh, part of the gingiva is appear during a smile this part is named the art portion so uh, in other words, they name it a pink aesthetic. Uh, teeth is named white aesthetic, and the gingival portion is named a pink aesthetic. So it's important to resemble and carving this portion to resemble the uh, natural uh, missing oral tissue. This is for aesthetic reason. And also there is a functional reason for uh, stability and retention because the ball surface is one of the surfaces that affect the stability of the denture. And the last one, and the, is important, uh, the most important rule is the adaptation of the patient. When you carve and repro uh, make a reproduction for the missing oral tissue, this will make easy for the patient to accept this denture and the period for adaptation will be short. So now we can make a definition for the waxing. The waxing is a shaping for the ball surface, a shaping of the ball surface of the wax of the trial denture into desired form. This is what do mean by waxing of the trial denture. So how this uh, affect the stability. We should uh, uh, return what do we mean by stability. We take the term of stability in one of the objective of the impression. 
Stability is affected in the three by three principal surface. One of them, the impression surface of the denture. This will be affected by the impression. If the impression is not fit, it will affect the stability. Also, the stability is affected by the occlusal surface. If the alignment of the teeth and the occlusion is not well and will not uh, gain the balance occlusion, also the stability of the denture will be affected. And the third factor also affect the stability of the denture is the ball surface, the ball surface. Uh, in the first lecture, we take the part of the complete denture. We know that the ball surface includes the facial surface, includes the labial and the buccal and also the palatal, and in the lower is the lingual surface. All this is uh, resemble the ball surface. How the ball surface affect the stability? Here we should make a carving of the ball surface from the lingual and the buccal in concave form. So it will give a space, uh, can be occupied by the tongue and the cheek. So it will can uh, crib uh, the denture and sit the denture in its place. So if we uh, not make the ball surface uh, lingually and buccally in concave form, this and make it in convex form and make it in convex form, this will uh, push the tongue and the cheek away and this will lead to dislodgement of the denture from its place. So this uh, show how the carving of the bullish surface and the waxing of the ball surface uh, in a proper way help in stability of the denture and how if we not uh, make the sh uh, contouring of the ball surface in a proper way, it will affect the stability uh, and interfere with, with the tongue and interfere with the cheek. So the requirement of the waxing of the ball surface, they should duplicate the covered soft tissue. When, as we said before, uh, we not just make a replacement for the missing tooth, we must make a replacement for the tooth and bury two, uh, uh, and also the uh, teeth, and, and also the tissue around these teeth. We must make a, a duplication for the interdental babilla, uh, for the gingival sulcus, for the root eminence. Uh, all these uh, should be made uh, duplicated uh, in the gingival portion. Also, we the border of the labial and buccal vestibule should fall, or the buccal flange should fall the vestibule. Uh, the vestibule that was recorded by the border molding should be all fold for uh, uh, with the uh, border of the denture uh, to get proper seal. And also, uh, should the waxing should provide the notch. Uh, during the waxing, we should avoid uh, close the notch because the notch is a space for uh, frenum attachment. Because the frenum attachment is one of the uh, relieving area should not cover by the denture. And also a contouring of the, uh, as we said, the contouring of the facial flange should be compatible with the cheek and the lip by making this uh, facial flange sli slightly concave and also the lingual flange should be compatible with the tongue and make this uh, contouring of the flange slightly concave so the tongue can be uh, sit in place and not dislodge and not make a dislodgement for the denture. And also the palatal sanction, uh, not, uh, it will not affect only on the stability, also it will affect on the pronunciation. If you not make a duplication, for the palatal section, like the rugi area, it also it will affect the pronunciation and it will maybe some uh, annoying for the patient. Uh, you should make a symboling for the uh, missing tissue uh, because when when you put the denture inside the patient's mouth, uh, you will cover the rugi area and the patient will not feel normal. So you 
when you try to make a reduplication for the ruggy area, so the patient uh, make feel normal, this will make a, a, a easy adaptation for the patient for the short period. Also during waxing, avoid to uh, make a bul bulky waxing. This bulky waxing uh, may be push the tongue and the cheek and affect the stability. And also it will affect the processing of the acrylic resin because if you remember, uh, there is a dimensional change in acrylic resin. Uh, so if, you, if there is a bulky uh, acrylic resin, this will make a more dimensional change and make a porosity for the tincture. Now, step by step, we should uh, uh, know and learn how to make uh, waxing and also name it fast tuning of the complete denture. First, we should mark by a pencil uh, the edge of the cast. The edge of the cast, we mean the outer border of the vestibule. The waxing should not extend uh, beyond this uh, line because the vestibule is the limit uh, for the thickness uh, of the flange. Then we use a, a base plate wax and add it from the edge of the cast to one third of the cervical of the tooth. We cover the cervical portion of the tooth. And now, and uh, in the next step, we know why, why we cover why we cover one third of the cervical of the tooth. Uh, the base plate wax is added from the facial side, from the palatal side, and also for the lower, uh, for the lingual side. We added a base plate wax uh, to, ma uh, to make a bulkness for carving this wax. Then uh, by a hot wax knife, a hot spoon a spatula, uh, we melt this uh, editing strip with the underlying wax. So we can blend it as a one piece, not a bear, there is uh, additional piece. We mu must uh, blend it with the underlying wax. Now we uh, carve interdental papilla. Uh, if you remember in the previous uh, uh, step, we said that we Added a base plate wax and cover this, the cervical third to the to the to this level. We cover with the base plate wax the cervical third. So the, the, this portion of the tooth is covered with base plate wax. Now we by a lacquer on a wax knife we remove the wax that cover this portion of the tooth. When we remove when, remove, when we remove it, now we will remove it. When we remove it, the, the wax remnant between the wax remnant between teeth, this represent the interdental papilla. The wax remnant between the teeth, this represent the interdental papilla. So this is the reason why we uh, cover the cervical portion of the teeth with the basic blade wax, so we can uh, carve the interdental papilla. You remember uh, in the first class when you study the dental anatomy that the contact point, the contact point between the teeth is not at the same level. It's high in the interior for the central incisor, it may be reached the middle third, and it will be, uh, be more lower uh, when you go to the posterior, so uh, so the same should uh, so the same should be done uh, when you carving the interdental babula. When you carving the interdental interdental babula, uh, you should make the level of the interdental babula not the same level, because this uh, when you give it the same level, this is artificial appearance, while the natural. The normal is not the same, is not the same level. And the anterior is high while in the posterior is low. Uh, after carving the interdental babilla, we carve the cervical sulcus, uh, or name it gingival sulcus. Uh, around the natural teeth, there is a sulcus 
between the gingiva and the, the tooth. So when we try to simulate the natural uh, situation, also we carve this groove uh, around the wax and the uh, artificial teeth to make this sulcus. Uh, and also uh, the procedure of the carving, we use a lacron and uh, from the inferior, if you, uh, from the inferior in 45 degree uh, to the cervical portion and uh, make a carving for this sulcus. Or can be used a probe, a dental probe, can use a dental probe for carving this sulcus. This to give uh, and resemble the situation is normal. As we said, there is a cervical sulcus or a gingival sulcus um, uh, lie between the gingiva and the tooth. So here we must uh, make a groove also between the wax and uh, between the wax and the artificial teeth. And also the excess wax should be uh, sh should be a reduction. So uh, we can make the uh, normal size for the clinical clump. Oh, uh, we must make a uh, concavity, not, not uh, forget uh, the concave uh, slope of the ball surface uh, to give a space for the tongue and the cheek to make a uh, avoidment for dental displacement and also to add this uh, action of the tongue and the cheek to aid in the stability and retention of the denture. And also for the same, for the same as uh, we uh, said that the interdental bubble is not at the same level. Also, this cervical sulcus is not at the same level. The, the, point, the most highest point uh, of the cervical sulcus, this, the most highest point of the cervical sulcus is named zenith, zenith point. The zenith point also is not at the same height as you show and is not in the same location. For the central incisor is in the middle, while in the lateral is slightly distal and is below, and the height of the zenith point is below the central incisor, while for the canine is higher from the lateral and is, uh, and is also in the distal portion. Uh, and for the first premolar is below than the canine and in the middle and so on. So also, when you try to make a natural appearance, not make the interdental bubble and, and nor the zenith point in the same level. They have a different level in the natural. After we make the interdental bubble and the cervical sulcus, now make and carve the root eminence. How we are making the root eminence? We make a, a slight groove depression between the interradical, between the teeth. As said before, the gingival portion near the teeth is named the art portion that we carve, that we carve, carving the interdental bubble and the cerv uh, cervical sulcus. While the upper portion of the gingiva is named the anatomical portion that we carve the root eminence and the frenum. How we carve the root eminence? By making a slight shallow groove between the interradical. What do we mean by interradical? That the area that located between the root of the teeth, uh, between how, how, we, how we know this, the location of the root of the teeth, because in each tooth uh, below, there is, a, uh, there is a root fixed in the dental arch. So this area between the tooth of the teeth, a uh, root of the teeth is named interradical. And make this, make this groove slightly inclined distally. So here can ask uh, who know why we make, why we make. Now, uh, now we continue our uh, steps for waxing and carving. After finish uh, carving of the root eminence, after make this groove inclined distally, we the area between this groove it will be appear as eminence of the root, especially the can canine. 
uh, the canine eminence will be more prominent from the other. Be careful not to be exaggerated, not make the groove is deep. So it will be uh, more prominence. Only the canine, it will be a slightly prominent eminence while the other is, is a slight eminence. They have a slight eminence of the goal. Uh, in, uh, uh, you have a knot in between, between each, between each root, we have one groove, but only the interior, central incisor have two groove. Why? Because we have a two root to make what? To make the frenum, to make the labial, we carve the labial frenum. After make a depression from this right and left, the elevation between them will appear as a labial frenum. In some situation, uh, uh, some uh, dental lab, uh, because some patient, they have uh, orange peel effect to resemble this effect, uh, we make a stapling of the wax. What do you mean by stapling and how, and how we make it? If you uh, look for the orange, uh, it's half a uh, peel effect. Uh, this uh, slight perforation, uh, uh, slight perforation uh, of the orange, uh, we try to assemble uh, because some uh, uh, gingiva of the patient have this effect. We try to uh, to assemble this orange peel effect. So we use a bristle of the dental uh, brush uh, after, after uh, softening of the wax by the flame. We are tapping by the bristle of the dental brush on the polished surface, so to get this uh, bristle effect. Uh, there is some uh, because uh, there is some uh, disadvantage. Uh, some prosthodontists avoid to make it. Uh, the advantage from make this bristle it uh, it will be a site uh, for accumulation of the calculus, uh, so it will uh, be a site for contamination. So it needs careful cleaning from the patient. And also it may be a symbol, a site for a crack propagation and will make the strength of the denture more weaker. After we finish the carving of the wax, because we get a sharp edge, we have to make a smooth, use a flame, a slightly quick flame to make a smoothing for the wax. After that, we polish to, to give a glossy appearance for the, uh, for the wax denture using a wet, using a wet cotton, uh, using a wet cotton. Uh, till now, to, till now to this step, we finish the waxing and the carving. We just uh, in hurry, remember the steps in general. First, we make uh, the mark on the cast, edge of the cast. We mark the edge of the cast so we know that our waxing is not over and not bulky. After that, we added a strip of the base plate wax to the facial and the palatal and the lingual surface. We should cover the cervical there. So after that, can we get, can and carve the papilla? Uh, the papilla should be not at the same height, should have a different height. And also it should be convex. Uh, it's not make a depression and it will finish to the facial surface. Not, there is no depression. Uh, it should be slightly prominent uh, and with the level of the facial surface and should be end to the contact point. So as the contact point is not at the same level, is, is high in the anterior, low in the posterior, so the height of the interdental bubble also is not at the same level. After that, we should uh, carve the cervical sulcus because in the natural tooth, there is a sulcus and is a space between the gingiva and the tooth. This space and the groove is named gingival sulcus. So we have to resemble this uh, by make a, a groove uh, and sulcus between the wax and the artificial tooth. Uh, 
here we say that it should be not, not at the same level. And also the height of the gingival sulcus is not at the same level, uh, is high in the incisal, low in the lateral, high in the canine. And also this, the most uh, epic point, this, the most highest point of the gingival sulcus is named zenith point. Also it have a different location in the central in the middle, while in the lateral is slightly distal, in the canine uh, also uh, for the distal and so on. After that, we carve the root eminence, how we carve it, make a, a, a groove between interradical, between the root of the tooth, a slight distally because uh, as we said, as the, uh, uh, as the tooth go to posterior, there's an inclination for the distal. So make this groove inclined distally. And after make this groove for the bus side, the area between them will be more prominent and elevated. So to give us uh, root eminence should be not more prominent just for the canine, it will be prominent. Uh, while for the anterior, uh, this elevation between the two central incisors will make the labial frenum. In some situation, uh, some patients uh, have uh, stippling in their gingiva. So to make this stippling and make this orange build effect, we use a bristle for the dental brush and tapping on the wax uh, after uh, flaming. We, after we finish carving, because you know the carving give a sharp edge, we need to smoothing, use a flame and leave it to cool. After that, we use uh, uh, wet cotton uh, to polish and give a glossy appearance. Now, after we finish the waxing, uh, there's a step should be make it uh, at the clinic uh, in the trial stage. We should know about uh, establishing the posterior seal area. How to, regi how to register this uh, sealing area, the posterior seal area. We take the posterior seal area in the uh, anatomical landmark. Uh, we define it's a soft tissue uh, uh, between two, its area between two lines. The anterior line represents the junction between the heart and the soft uh, palate, while the posterior line, the ah line or vibrating line, is the junction between movable and immovable uh, soft tissue. So we have to register this area. How we are registered this area? Uh, first, we palpate the vibrating line from one homular notch to other. Uh, and uh, after we uh, determine the vibrating line, we mark the vibrating line with a special pencil, name it in the bulb pencil, uh, from one homular notch to other. If I ask the patient to say, ah, so when the line is vibrating, we mark this vibra uh, vibration area uh, from one homular notch uh, uh, in the middle, uh, slightly in the front of Vavia Palatini. Uh, uh, after uh, mark, mark inside patient mouth, we reinsert the trial denture base. So it will be imprint on the trial denture base this imprint on the trial denture base, we will sit on the cast, so it will also imprint on the cast, and uh, this will, uh, and carving this imprint on the cast, so we can have uh, a bead. Uh, the procedure of the carving, uh, there uh, sh we should make a V-shaped notch, uh, one to 1.5 millim depth, uh, and, uh, and the diameter also one half point millim, while in the middle is 0 0.5 millim. We carve this portion to get in the denture, was named a post dam. This, uh, the benefit of uh, this uh, post dam or posterior palatal seal area uh, to help in the retention and also to avoid uh, food accumulation beneath the, the denture and also it's uh, make a definitive for the posterior extension of the denture uh, and also reduce the gag reflex. Uh, 
Uh, all these have a many benefit of the uh, posterior and the bosom uh, of the denture. It's also, uh, you should know, it's make it only in the maxillary uh, denture because the posterior bilateral cell area uh, present only in the maxillary arch. So, till now, we are finished our lecture. Uh, thanks for your attention, and will we ask if there is any a question? Thank you.